I first met Charles Olson in about a century. I'd been jogging the trails and sat down beside the lake. The sounds I could hear clearly, my heart pounding and birds singing. Charles Olson sort of rose up out of the lake as though absolved of gravity or resolved of anti-gravity. Not Excalibur, a broken bottle in one hand and the shell of a turtle in his left as though prepared for battle. Are you Arthur? No, I'm Arthur. Roared, was it laughter? Olsen settles, his toes flexing, squishing mud and goose shit between them. Olsen's toes at the lake's edge look like butterflies, butterflies flexing their wings, clad in the breastplate of an ancient snapper a cooter that must have lived 400 years and put on a pound for every one of them. Now he doesn't have a broken bottle in his hand. It is a mayfly, cupped there gently, tiny eyes, fly eyes, surveying the inside of Charles Olson's cupped palm, inside his fist as it were. They say think outside the box, and I say I was thinking outside Charles Olson's fist. From the point the poet puts himself in the open, he can go no other way than the poem declares for itself, Charles Olson. In the middle, he can see both banks, and an afternoon moon. Now the moon is the face of an elk. Now the moon is a clam. A great swarm of insects sweep across it, the tribe, the extended family, that produced the first individual who fashioned a bowl from something other than a turtle or a crab shell or half a nutshell made sounds about the moon, sounds the tribe understood. The moon was a bowl, and each day a magnificent, unknowable animal, probably a moose would come to drink from it, and when all the water was gone, it would begin to fill again. For the first family, the first tribe, this was the resurrection story. This was the promise of renewal. It was the buds of new antlers. That's what it was. Ted Pope, The Third Bank of the River, 1914-1918.